Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. Hope you're doing well, staying safe, taking care of yourselves, all those kind of things. And if you're new here, my name is Jim. It's great to meet you. Thanks for stopping by. I make tutorial videos here every week showing you how I edit my photos using various software products. Today I'm in Luminar AI, which is still in beta, just to be clear. I say that in every video, but I have to. Um, and I want to, frankly, because if something changes, I don't want you to come back to the video and say, hey, that wasn't what you showed. Um, so just FYI, it's in beta. It is expected out. Um, they said during the holiday season, which technically runs till like the beginning of January, I guess. But my hope is that it'll be out before Christmas. But I don't know. They haven't given us a firm date. And uh, I'm sure that you'll hear at the same time that I hear. So. Hopefully that answers that question because I get that a lot, but I do want you to have it. I'm having a lot of fun with it, and I'm going to show you how I'm having fun with it today with a particular photo. And this video is about how I can, what I consider editing for mood. In other words, you've got a photo that maybe has a little bit of mood, and you want to accentuate that mood, or maybe it doesn't have a lot of mood, and you want to add some mood or kind of some, dr not drama per se, but just, I don't know, mood. Uh, maybe atmosphere, but that's not entirely... Uh, right either. Mood is the word. I don't know. That's what I'm going with. Anyway, I've got a photo. It's already kind of moody. This is unedited photo taken in a forest in Oregon. It's just, a, let's be honest, that's a wickedly cool tree. We were on a hike, uh, and honestly, this was kind of a throwaway snapshot. It's not exactly um, particularly amazing in any way. It's just a really cool tree with all the branches going everywhere. But what I wanted to do is kind of walk through, because I've been playing with this in Luminar AI, and um, I'm just having fun with it. So I thought I would walk through kind of what I did here. So the first thing for me with mood is temperature. To me, that's too warm. I think of a moody photo as being a little cooler. I have a bias uh, to cooler photos, though, just to be clear. So I'm going to admit that up front. Um, unless it's like a sunset or a sunrise where it's like golden and the, and the color and light is really popping. Outside of that, I tend to have a bias towards cooler looking things. So I'm going to move this temperature down. I'm doing like 4,300 or something like that. So maybe something about like that. Um, just cooling it off because I want to reduce some of that warmth. And I got to look at my notes here. Okay, the tint is fine. So the next thing I'm going to do is add contrast. So I'm going to pull that up a little bit. And um, I think one of the things when I'm talking about mood, for me, it's a, it's a couple of things. Um, details to some extent, but a lot of it is color and light. And to me, that helps accentuate the mood. So that's kind of what I'm working on here. Uh, I'm gonna take these highlights down. It's like a negative 40 or so. And I'm gonna bump up the shadows a little bit and I'm gonna do about a 40, 45, something like that. So not a massive difference, but already, I mean, we've gone from that to that. So cooler, um, it just feels a little bit later in the day. It, it wasn't, it was like mid afternoon. So hence the warmth. But the cooler makes it feel a little bit later in the day, which to me kind of inherently brings a little bit more mood with it. So um, I am going to add a little bit of Structure AI, which I absolutely adore. I use this tool on every photo, maybe, literally, like almost every photo. So uh, that's it for this first tab. So there's the before and there's the current state. Now I'm going to get over to the Creative tab, and that's where a lot of the mood and kind of atmosphere comes in. Uh, obviously, I'm hinting at and going to be talking about Atmosphere AI. And I'm going to go with fog here, and I'm going to do it about a 20 or so. As you can see, there's already fog in the photo, and that's where I think um, I've, I've done Atmosphere AI in a previous video there. And a lot of the comments were, hey, it doesn't really look right there, like it's not natural. And, and you know, that's a fair point. I was just putting it in photos to show you how it worked. This photo already has it. I would love your feedback and say, hey, Jim, here's what I think about how it looks. So leave a comment down below and let me know. But um, I'm going to do a higher depth because I'm going to pull that fog forward in the photo because in the base photo, um, it's just out there in the trees in that upper right corner. I want to pull it more into me. And I got to find my, uh, my notes here. I'm at about a 50 or so on lightness. So I don't really want to make it super bright. So let me turn that off. There's before the fog filter. You can see there's a fog that's coming in, uh, and it was fogged up pretty well out there. And then after, it's just kind of a light, gentle touch. I love the depth because it's got 3D depth mapping built in, allows you to pull that forward, and it recognizes things. And so I'm pulling it forward, and it's getting closer and closer to that tree. But you know, back there, it, it's really just behind the tree. So I like kind of how it it's recognizing the tree and that the tree is close to me. Therefore, it should not be shrouded in fog because it's close and our eye is going to see it because it's close. Hope that makes sense. Um, dramatic, I'm going to do just a slight bump here, like around 30 or something. And that's just giving a little bit of crunch to the scene. Um, and I got to be honest, I waffle a little bit. Um, if I'm creating a moody photo, for me, it kind of depends. Like, um, what do you mean by moody? And every photo that I'm 
I call moody, which I probably use that word a lot. Um, every photo is going to be different. Some photos, I think, limited detail and, in fact, negative detail, negative structure look better. Um, and in some positive detail, positive structure, maybe in this case positive on the dramatic filter, look good. I like it brings up some of that crunchiness in like the bark and the tree limbs and stuff. It totally depends on what you want to do with a photo. That's, I think, what's so great about digital photography. You can make kind of whatever you want. It doesn't matter if that's what you saw or not because it's your art. You should make whatever you want. You've heard me say that before. Um, but there's dramatic. The other thing, as I mentioned, is light and color. And that's one of the great things about the toning filter. And one of the reasons I love it so much, and by the way, it was called split toning in Luminar 4, Luminar 3, Luminar 2018, Luminar Flex, Luminar 1. Um, it's called toning now. And by the way, it used to be on the professional tab. It's now over here on the creative tab. But regardless of where it is, the great thing about it is it separates highlights from shadows. That's two different kinds of light. Highlights being the bright light, shadows being very limited light, and lets you control the color. What did I say at the beginning about mood, color, and light? That you're kind of massaging those things, and toning, I think, is a great way to do that. So I'm going to go to about, i got to look at my notes here. I'm at about, oh gosh, uh, that's way too much. I'm at about 32 on highlights, but the hue I'm going to put in the blues. Because to me, blue is a little bit moodier. As I said at the beginning, a cooler scene to me feels moodier than a warmer scene. Um, if you think about color, like red, warm tones, they're happy or excited or angry if it's really red. Blue tones are more somber, a little more sullen, a little calmer. And to me, that's moodier. Maybe it's just how I think about it, but that is how I think about it. And so that's kind of what I'm sharing here. I'm going to go, uh, so, ooh, this is low. This is like a 12 on the saturation. But I'm also going to put the, um, the shadows into the blue as well. So in other words, I'm putting blue across the entire photo, but it's slightly different amounts. More in the highlights, which is going to obviously be the brighter parts, like the blown out sky, where it's kind of foggy. Whereas the shadows are going to be like the tree trunks and some of that stuff. And so all I'm doing is creating a little bit of a blue hue on it. And it's pretty subtle here. There it is before. And there it is after. Now, I, I mean, I could bump that up quite a bit and really go blue, which has its own kind of interesting look to it. And I, I kind of like that, to be honest. Um, I would say be careful with the shadows because with all these trees turning blue, which is what happens if the shadows go blue because it's, it's creating blue in all those tree trunks. It's going to look really unnatural. It could be a mood. Um, it depends on the mood you're talking about and the mood you're going for. That's a lot of talking about split toning. Just experiment with it. Have fun with it. It's it's super cool. Uh, Mystical is one of the great, great, great all-time favorites of many people. Um, in fact, I've had people comment on some of my earlier Luminar AI videos when I use Mystical, and they were like high five and like, yeah, Mystical's there. It's here. It's awesome. Um, I'm going to go pretty high. I'm going to go like a 60 or so. And if I turn that off, you can see the before and the after. And to me, that does two things. It kind of softens up detail, which is contrary to what I did in structure. But uh, two, it creates a little bit more contrast, which is the difference between dark and bright. And so it creates a little bit more darker areas that are already dark, and it kind of brightens the areas that are already bright. Let me show you again. There it is before, and there it is after. If you notice, especially in this fog, because it's brightening and kind of blowing out that area a little bit more, it's making the fog appear thicker up there. Let me show you one more time. There it is before and after. The fog to me seems a little bit denser and a little bit closer, and I like that a whole lot about how Mystical did that on this photo. Now, just to keep the Orton filter, which I love and have used uh, countless times in countless videos in Luminar 4, just to keep it from feeling ignored and um, overlooked because of my love for Mystical, I'm going to go into Glow. And if you click up here, you now have Orton and Orton Soft um, in the Glow tool. So you have Soft Focus, Glow, Orton, and Orton Soft. I'm going to go Orton, and my notes tell me that I did about a 33. And so that's another way of kind of accentuating that foggy mood that I've got going. Started with the base photo of that already had fog in it. I used the Atmosphere AI to give it a kick and to bring it forward in the photo. I used Mystical and now Orton. So I'm kind of doubling, tripling, quadrupling in some in some regard um, the amount of, uh, or exaggerating the effect, I guess. I'm, I'm not really tripling or quadrupling it, but I'm exaggerating the effect. So if I turn that off, there it is before and there it is after. So you can see adding Orton on top of Mystical did a little bit more of that high contrast look, blowing out even more of those highlights. And if you look at the trees on the left-hand side behind those big branches that stick out, they get foggier with the Orton effect, uh, and they didn't as much as Mystical. So 
I like doubling those two up on these kind of photos because if I'm adding mood, those two um, are fantastic for it. And that's why I was saying at the beginning, um, I, I call it moody and not an atmospheric effect because I, I don't want you to think, oh, he's going to use atmosphere AI and stick fog and then carry on and go do something else. That's not what it's about. That helps. I think that's. Uh, I think it's a great tool. Personally, I'm having a lot of fun with it, and I hope you enjoy it as well. But sticking mystical and glow in combination with that fog, I think, is really making a big difference on how that scene is looking. And I'm really about done. The only thing I want to do is go over to Pro and go to Dodge and Burn. And what I want to do is go into Darken, and I'm going to go Strength. Uh, I'm going to go Lower Strength, and I'm going to go a Higher Brush Size. And all I want to do, in fact, I'm going to go a little bit higher even. And I'm just going to paint a little bit of darkness uh, around some of the foreground. And you can see some artifacts um, are kind of showing up here. Again, we're in beta. Um, they're not staying in the photo, as you can see. And if I turn this off, there it is before and after. So um, I trust that that stuff is going to go away once the beta is complete. But I, I wanted to point out, I do see that in case you're pointing it out saying, hey, what's that weird? Uh, I saw like rectangle lines or something. But basically... Um, there's Dodge and Burn, and all I wanted to do is, um, going back to the beginning of the video, for me, mood is light and color mostly, and that is playing with light. That's what Dodge and Burn does. So that's really my whole workflow. Let me show you where we started. There's the before photo, and there's the after photo. So if I go back, you can see we did move the light quite a bit. We really accentuated that fog and really carried it deeper and, and allowed it to basically penetrate the photo further. And then, of course, we messed with uh, like the color and the tones, the temperature. To me, the greenish blue looks a lot more moody than the orangey yellow green that you see. One other thing to think about is in color, if those greens are too much for you, you can come into color, go in here to HSL and go to saturation and go to green and pull that down a little bit if you want to reduce that. And I actually might go in and go into luminance, and I haven't tried this on yet on this photo, give it a little bit of luminance. And I, I like how that's brightening up the, the background there a little bit. Um, I just thought of that while I was making this video because prior to that, let me turn this off, you can see um, it's a little bit darker and a little bit greener, but turning um, the green saturation down and the luminance up made it less green, so less vibrant, but brighter. And the way to me it looks brighter is the fog coming in from that upper right corner is kind of coming in and it feels like there's sunshine behind it, so it's so bright and it's kind of like brightening up that part, which is back there. It's not in the foreground. The foreground to me is between the viewer and the tree and maybe the back edge of that tree trunk. But then after that, it starts to get into forest, which is more like mid-ground uh, and then background. And l increasing the luminance on the green, I think kind of helped a little bit. So I kind of like that idea. Just made that up on the spot. There it is before and after. And once again, I'll show you my full before and after. There's the starting photo. There's the ending photo. That's kind of how I think about bringing up and editing for mood, how I accentuate mood in a photo. Just wanted to share that. I'm having a lot of fun with Luminor AI. I trust that you're going to have a lot of fun with it. A lot more videos coming. I'll see you soon, my friends. Thank you so much for stopping by. I really appreciate it. Have a great day out there. Stay safe. Take care and adios.